All right. Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to day three of uh, uh, number 48 of the Synergy Trader series on timingresearch.com. Uh, this is the fourth annual uh, Friendsgiving 2023 conference, and this is brought to you by tradeoutloud.com and timingresearch.com. Um, all of today's presentations are for educational purposes only. Trading is not suitable for all people, so please... Um, uh, consult a financial advisor and uh, only trade with money you can afford to lose. Um, all sessions are being recorded individually. You'll be able to find those on timingresearch.com as soon as I can get them processed and posted. Also, if you search for Timing Research on YouTube, Substack, or your favorite podcast app, you can find the recordings there as well. So today, our opening presenter is Valerie Fox of tradefocus.com. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to her. To her. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for calling in and joining us at the start of day three here. I always love this conference. I've done it for maybe three of the four years or four of the four years. I don't recall. But uh, this is always a fun one just to give back and, and help traders kind of finish the year strong. And I'm doing something a little different this year with my presentation. And I'm really opening it up to you guys. So this presentation I'm calling, <clears throat> excuse me, Trading Insights, Your Burning Questions Answered. So while I do my brief introduction here, I want you to think about one or two questions you might have about trading, um, anything under the sun. In a moment, I'll open up the chat and allow you to post your questions. But this entire presentation is focused on helping you where you want help most. So I'm trying a little bit something new with this year's presentation, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I already have a couple of questions I've gotten from some of my trading clients um, it, to start the call, but we'll have plenty of room for questions live on the call as well. But uh, before I get too far, my name is Valerie Fox. Um, I My website is tradefocus.com. I'm the author of the Self-Reliant Trader Method book, but I've been trading um, personally with my own money for over 12 years. So it's been, <laughs> it's been an exciting journey. It wasn't all... Um, butterflies and rainbows at first for me. I had my fair share of trials and tribulations for the first three years or so. And then um, I made some very uh, vital decisions to change my ways and, and to make some specific improvements to my trading, mainly um, you know, focusing on one strategy, using a rules-based strategy, and really kind of becoming a master of one. And that is where it all changed for me. But um, since then, I've been trading Forex. Forex is my specialty, although I help, have helped you know traders around the world in all markets um, because really uh, what I do from um, supporting traders and helping them with their trade plans and really become these um, flawless traders with operational excellence using kind of some key practices that apply to any market um, you know, I love helping traders build their strategies, refine their strategies, optimize profitability, and really um, build their way up to where they can own their future financially. So that's me in a nutshell. Um, a couple, I grew up in the U.S., but a couple of years ago, I, which was part of my, my trading plan all along, I got the opportunity to move to Portugal, and I live on the island of Madeira. Has anyone on the call been to Madeira? Post yes in the chat box if you have. I'm just curious. Um, most people in the U.S. have never even heard of Madeira, the island of Madeira. But um, some people surprise me. Um, a lot of people in Europe are more familiar with the island of Madeira. They call it the Hawaii of Europe. But it's a really beautiful island. You can see the background of my picture there. Um, if you're looking for a, a good vacation destination, check it out. Anyways, I'm getting too far off track. Let's dive in. Um, hopefully your questions are starting to build on the surface here. Uh, David started with a disclaimer. Um, so I'm not going to repeat this whole disclaimer other than just reminding you that, you know, this presentation is for educational purposes only. And um, none of anything that I say should be considered specific investment or trading advice. We're just going to be doing a lot of talking, answering questions, and ultimately, you know, you're responsible for all of your trading decisions. Okay, so... Now's the time of the presentation where you get to ask me anything. So you post any question you have about trading in the chat area, whether that's about a specific indicator, about a market, about what I see on the horizon, 
um, what I think of a specific ticker or instrument. Um, I'm happy to look at anything. Nothing is off limits as long as it's about trading. Um, I have a couple of questions I'll get us started with while you guys are thinking, but again, just go to the chat window and post your questions. Okay, so here is one of my questions that I got before the call. Would you share your thoughts about how trading will change over the next five years and how we, how can a newbie trader or a veteran trader prepare for these changes? It's a great question. Um, it's definitely speculative in nature, obviously. Um, no one really knows what's going to change, but um, I'll give you a couple of my observations and a couple of my, my own perspective on, on what's going to change and how you can prepare as a trader. So as we've seen in the last couple of decades, trading has just generally become more accessible to individual traders. And I see that continuing. Um, I also see like the wealth of information continuing to expand, you know, as we look at things like um, AI coming, becoming more available and more and more people using it. There's a lot that can be used and learned from that and coding is becoming easier and all of this. So what I envision in the future for trading is that it's more accessible, but there's more noise. Um, and, and that's partially true now in today's world. Uh, but I think it's going to ramp up even more. I do see like coding and automating becoming a little bit more mainstream because those technologies and tools are just going to become more simple to um, to prepare. So I think you'll see a lot more like automated trading in the future where, you know, you can program your strategies and there's maybe less human intervention needed with your specific strategy. Um, and then in general, I think just can, because the markets are dynamic and ever changing, it's going to be ever important to just kind of continue to be a student of the game, so to speak, continue to be trading, uh, to, to not being, um, what would I call it, like stuck in your ways or like unopened to new ways of trading. I think you're going to have to kind of constantly be trading in a way that's working for you now, but like continuing to optimize your strategy, if that makes sense. And, and for me, that's something that I teach to traders and I teach traders to do now. Um, so it's not much different, but the, the markets are dynamics. And I think as you get more and more traders using kind of autopilot or like programming their strategies, you know, you're going to see a lot more, uh, maybe even more respect for technical analysis. Maybe, I don't know. So it's all skeptical, uh, or I mean, uh, what do you, what's the word I was trying to say? Speculative. But I think trading's not going anywhere. I think more people are going to be trading in the next five years. I think it's going to be become more accessible. I think um, it's going to be really good for traders. But I think you're going to have to continue to just stay informed and not get complacent with how you trade. Um, but also just try to not chase every shiny object, <laughs> which can be hard for a trader. So that's where I'll put my thoughts there. Um, I have had questions over the years about like, is trading going to go away and all that? And, and I don't foresee that in our lifetime. Um, I think trading is something that will be there because currencies and the stock market and all of that is still a big part of our economy, but, um, but you never know. Uh, we'll, we shall see. <laughs> Ask me again in a couple of years and we'll see if my answer changes. Um, the next question is, what was the very first method you used when trading and how many methods did you explore until you reached a consistent result to be successful? And it's funny, uh, I really had to think about this because that was a long time ago. And I actually went through many strategies before ultimately creating my own that uh, has been profitable, but my first strategy, I don't remember who it was with. I bought a program from someone. Um, it was like a London breakout strategy in the Forex market. And I bought this like private coaching package and, um, ultimately it wasn't a good fit because I lived in the U S at the time and I would have to get up in the middle of the night. And it was really ridiculous, uh, that I even thought I could do that and maintain that in the long run. 
But um, that was the first one I did. I was not successful at it because I ultimately was kind of setting myself up for failure with it not being at an ideal time of day for me. Um, but I also learned many, you know, dozens of strategies from other traders, whether that was, you know, um, searching things on YouTube or, or finding things online or joining trading groups um, or buying programs. Um, I did a lot of studying with head and shoulders patterns, candlestick reversals, support and resistance, moving averages, um, MACD divergence. So that was kind of where all my studying went early on. And quite honestly, I tried to do too many things at once. So uh, I tried to be basically a generalist in everything and not a master of one. And for that reason, I was not successful the first like three years of my trading, uh, meaning I didn't make money. And we're gonna get to the charts here in a minute. Um, but ultimately in focusing on one and in, um, really becoming a master in one, that's, was my turning point in year four that I became profitable. Okay. I see some questions submitted. So let's go to those. Um, Richard asks, number one, as a trader, what led you to leave the U S? Um, great question. It wasn't actually, so basically I had a dream of moving abroad. So when I was in college, I did a study abroad in Spain and it kind of opened up my eyes to living outside of the US and to embracing different cultures. But, you know, I was in the middle of college at the time. I came back, I graduated, I got a job at a Fortune 500 company and really loved that for a long time, kind of went back on that conventional path. And then I kind of hit a wall about 10 years into my career and I was like, oh man, I really wish I could travel more. You know, I had met my husband by then and he really, you know, kind of craved this like unconventional life of maybe like being able to travel or live anywhere. And so we started exploring our options, but ultimately our corporate incomes like didn't allow us to do that. That was, you know, long before um, work from home became more mainstream. So we were like, how could we, we just need to get a portable income. And I, we did a bunch of research. We even started a business and sold it. And then eventually, you know, I was like, oh, trading, like I just need a computer and internet. If I could get that to work, then we could live anywhere. And, you know, it took many years, <laughs> but um, we eventually got it. So uh, that's trading didn't actually lead me to leave the U.S. It was I wanted to leave the U.S. and trading was the way. Um, and then as a trader, what led you to reside in Portugal? So um, for us. Again, it doesn't really have anything to do with trading, but it was just more that Portugal was a country that best fit our family's needs and desires um, in terms of like residency, cost of living, quality of life, um, those types of things, culture fit. So we explored other countries like Ecuador and Costa Rica and Spain and um, Italy and France, but ultimately Portugal met our needs best. And so that's where we landed. Uh, good questions. Let's go to the next one. Shark paint. Why are you focused or specialized on Forex instead of the other markets? Great question. You know, when I was, uh, I remember when I, I said, okay, I'm going to teach myself to trade or I'm going to figure this trading thing out 12 years ago. One of the first decisions I had to make is, okay, what market is, am I going to trade? Um, so I went and did a lot of research on the different markets, comparing and contrasting, looking at the requirements, um, the benefits, et cetera. And a couple of things that really drew me to the Forex market were uh, the hours of operation. So it operates 24 hours a day was the main one, honestly, because um, I wanted the flexibility in being able to trade at different times of day. Um, you know, when I first started trading, I was uh, running a business on the side as well. And so daytime wasn't exactly opportune and I didn't really want to be sitting at my computer all day. So Forex not only had the wider hours of operation that I was desiring, but also I enjoyed the, um, the high volume. So like liquidity isn't really a problem because it's actually quite substantially larger than the stock market in terms of volume. Um, so if you trade the majors, you have no problems getting orders filled, et cetera, and trade in both directions. You can, um, 
You also have leverage, which can be a really good thing. It can also be a really bad thing, but as long as you practice risk mitigation, you can grow your money more quickly using a leverage type of trading, very responsibly, of course. Um, and then I also liked the the narrow focus of it. You know, with the stock market, there's like over 7,000 tradable instruments. And um, a lot of traders that trade the stock market have to really spend a lot of time narrowing their focus. And in the Forex market, it just seemed a little bit more straightforward because when I focused on just the majors at the time, you know, there was only less than 10 um, instruments that I focused on. And even there was a time where I just focused on one or two and really got to know those pairs. So it, it just seemed more manageable all around. But the main reason was the hours of operation, I would say. And then the other ones were kind of like icing on the cake for me. Um, next, Web823 asks, where do you think the S&P will be by the end of December or, or, or early next year? So let's pull up the chart. I was hoping for some chart questions, so I had it prepared. Okay, so the SPX, S&P 500. So um, I'm not really someone who, um, as a trader, I'm a technical trader. I really uh, focus a lot on price action analysis, uh, just really reading the charts as they are, the way I'm showing them. Um, for me, as a price action trader, it's not, and, and trading in general really shouldn't be about predicting, but really using like market signals to give you an edge or a higher probability that it's going to go somewhere than another where. <laughs> So let me tell you what I mean by that. So here we're looking at the S&P uh, 500 index on the one month. So I want to zoom out and just look at the monthly chart for a moment. Because when we look overall at the S&P 500, um, obviously for the last uh, decade or so, it's been more or less in an uptrend. We did see a pullback here um, in 22, but in 23, it's been going up. So from a support and resistance standpoint, I see some key levels that I would notate here on the chart. So this is one right here. I'm just going to mark a couple of levels. And then here's another one right here. So for me, if price on the S&P 500 index breaches this prior high over from uh, December of 21, January 22. If price closes above that on like on the bigger picture monthly, um, then I would definitely be bullish on the S&P 500 index. Or if it goes and closes below this prior low down here, then I would be bearish. For me, that isn't based on a certain amount of time. It's just when price gets to these key levels um, by going beyond and closing, that is directionally indicative, in my opinion, as a support and resistance trader. So um, that's what I would say kind of big picture. When the S&P moves above this or below this, then I would say that's strongly indicative based off the, the monthly chart. If we go down to like the daily chart and look at kind of some key levels that maybe uh, would be more meaningful here in the kind of more recent. So on the daily chart, we have this level here back from, um, when is this? July of 23. If we end up operating above that, which we very well could um, in December, then I'd say that's good for a little run up in the shorter term. And then in terms of the downside, um, you know, this is a good area of prior resistance that if it comes down, it would be support. That would be a very natural place. And we have some good levels as you look left here. So I would say if on the downside, price kind of moves back down and ends up operating below this, that would be more indicative of a shorter like run down for a bearish market. So for me, it's all about key levels of support and resistance. Hopefully um, that's helpful to you, Web823. But mainly it's it's all about looking at those key levels. Right now it's kind of, you know, going back and forth a bit. It's currently in an uptrend technically for the year, but we're approaching some really meaningful 
levels of prior resistance, both on the daily and then on the monthly when you go even higher here. Like this is a very key level for like bigger picture on the monthly chart. And then this level here from the daily chart is meaningful. Um, so it just depends kind of if you're day trading, intraday trading, position trading, you know, obviously you can get different signals depending upon which charts you're using. But big picture, when we breach this, uh, that's definitely gonna lean towards the upside. All right. Um, Nawal Liartz Gunter from Belgium. How large is the t tax from trading? Um, so it depends on your country of residence. I'm not familiar with Belgium's taxes. Um, so you'd really have to look at that. Some of it depends on what kind of trading account you set up. Is it a personal trading account? Is it a business trading account? Is it um, an IRA trading account? And then from there, it's all about your country of residence and how that flows through. So you really just need to do your country specific research based on the type of account you have. And if you have specific questions about taxes, then um, you could also contact an accountant in your country of residence. And they're gonna know a lot more if you can't easily decipher it on your, um, your tax authorities website. So sorry, I couldn't be more specific on that, but it really does vary account to account and country to country. Says your trading platform is question mark and why from Brock. So I use Oanda to trade uh, Forex. <coughs> it's a broker I've used for a long time. It's not the only broker I've used. I've also used a couple others, FXCM before it went down in the US and um, Forex.com and a couple MT4 platforms over the years. Um, Oanda, has a very similar user interface to this trading view interface, which to me is really user friendly and a little bit more pretty. I'm not a big fan of those like kind of old school MT4 platforms and I don't use any custom indicators or anything like that. So it's really unnecessary for me to use that. I like the flexibility that Oanda and trading view offer because they allow you to customize it. You can change the chart times. You could change from bid to ask to mid prices. You have all these really intuitive drawing tools. So for me, uh, just for clarity, I use oyanda.com. You could go there and check it out. They have a couple different brokers. I'm not affiliated with them at all. But when you go to platforms, I actually use their web platform. I'm just showing you in case you're interested. They have a demo account, but ultimately it's very similar to what you see that I'm showing you here on TradingView as well. But it's just really simple and intuitive and, and, I, and it's clean and I like it. <laughs> so... Um, the one thing I tell people when they choose their trading platform is, uh, you know, there's a lot of platform options out there. And the one thing you should consider is to use, this is my opinion, but to use a regulated broker in your country. So um, there's a lot of brokers out there that are not regulated and they make all these crazy promises, but normally you'll pay for things in the end, <laughs> uh, whether that's when you want to withdraw your money or whatever. So when you use a regulated broker, there's just a little bit more trust that they're following the rules and they're being fair to their clients. So um, the next question is from Kamarul Baran Raja. Considering that supposedly over 70% of the market trades are now being auto-traded, how do you consider the prospects of those that still trade conventionally, especially when AI is being included in auto-trading? Great question. So um, I still trade conventionally as well just to be completely upfront. Um, and I've not noticed any difference. I mean, the one thing I do is I do a little bit of front running with my entries. So I do uh, limit entries to wait for pullbacks and things like that to key levels of support and resistance with my trading. And so instead of entering right at that key level, I'll front run it depending upon how, like if I'm position trading or scalping either by a couple pips or maybe five pips or maybe just one pip if I'm scalping. But ultimately you could do some front running to protect yourself to get uh, filled on some entries. But I haven't noticed anything major, honestly. I mean, there's been a lot of algo trading for years and years and years. And um, there's still plenty of retail traders using conventional methods to trade, um, not, not being impacted by that. 
And as I said, if anything else, algo traders are going to just continue to reinforce um, technical analysis because they too use key levels of support and resistance and, and historical price action. So hopefully that answers your question there. The next question, what technical indicators do you use? Which is your best trading session in Forex and best time frame? Ooh, lots of questions there. So um, let's start with the first part of that, the technical indicators. So for me, uh, I'm a price action trader and I generally trade with just charts like this and a couple of lines. Um, I like to use multiple time frames. So like I might do like a higher level analysis on like the monthly or weekly or the daily, and then actually enter maybe on the four hour charts. Um, so the key here is just knowing how you're gonna find an edge. So when we think of an indicator, it's really a way for you to clearly identify an edge. One of my favorite indicators that I use um, when I do use them that clearly defined, I, I use it as kind of a simple tool is just a moving average. Um, it's really helps you identify the trend. Um, so this is just a simple moving average for nine candles. So what the moving average tells you, there's a couple different ways you can look at it. But ultimately, when price is above the moving average, whether it's a nine or a 21 or a 20, um, what that's going to tell you is it's an uptrend. When it comes down, it's doing a pullback. And then when it closed above it again, it's in an uptrend. Um, so you can use this to identify um, a trading bias, for example. Like when price is above the moving average, you might not want to sell it. You might want to look for opportunities to buy. And vice versa, when price is below the moving average, you might want to look for opportunities to sell. You can also use a moving average to... Um, to manage your exits, right? So if you entered somewhere up here, you know, depending upon how you define your entries, you wrote it down. Once it closes above it, that might be a good time to exit a trade, um, if not before, of course. Uh, you're never going to get the full ride on a on a move, but um, so for me, I think moving averages are the single best way to identify the trend and build what I call a trading bias, which is which direction you're going to trade. You can do this on the four hour chart. Uh, the same thing is on the 15 minute chart now. The lower you go in time frame, the choppier it gets, right? The higher time frame you go, like if you go up to the monthly, the more clarity it's going to give you with the overall trend. And you can even layer multiple time frames, right? So maybe you say, um, and this is something that you can explore. Just add it to your charts and then toggle between timeframes to see what you like. You can also change the settings. So like this one's a nine. If I add a second one, if I add another moving average, but this one I set at instead of nine candles, I'll do 20. So the nine moving average, uh, let's make them different colors because they really kind of blend together. So you can see the 20 is in orange, the nine is in um, blue. If we go back down to like a one hour chart where we see a little more movement, you can see the nine is more reactive and changes, the 20 is a little more steady. So you could also use two or just like decide which one you like better, which signal you like better. Um, so one of the exercises I give to traders is like, choose an indicator, let's just say a moving average and see if you can just like pick one uh, ticker or stock or, um, you know, uh, I just blanked uh, commodity or um, currency, and it works on all of them, no matter what you trade. I just flipped through several. Um, and you can see very clearly when price is operating below or above it. And again, this works on all time frames. So you can even go down to a five-minute chart. 
So I think a moving average is a really great one to add to your bucket list, just to explore. Go to your charts and look at it and see if you can find these opportunities for an edge. That's um, one that I give to a lot of traders who are struggling to find their edge because it's just a really easy visual. Um, also another component of a moving average. So you have the relationship of price to the moving average, right? So price is down here, the moving average is here, price is below it for a downtrend. But also the slope of the moving average can tell you the strength of the trend. So when the moving average is sloped downward, it's a downtrend. When it slopes up, it's an uptrend. A lot, oftentimes it correlates to the, the price as well, but there's like kind of two different components you can look at with moving averages. Um, the best trading session in Forex. So I predominantly right now, I'm a, I'm a position trader, which means that I'm holding trades, um, taking a little bit more longer term trades where I'll hold my trades for um, somewhere between a day to maybe a couple of weeks. So right now I do a lot of my analysis on the weekends, uh, looking at the monthly, weekly, and daily charts for my higher time frame um, correlation, and then actually finding entries on the four hour charts once every all my qualifications are met. So I have to analyze my charts weekly and then just kind of check on trades daily. So that's something that I really like because it protects my time a little bit. Um, for someone who is maybe um, an intraday trader, you might actually use the 15 minute chart and you might have to be a little bit more active on each day to um, qualify, enter and manage your trades. Or if you're like a scalper on like the five minute or one minute chart, obviously you'd have to be really um, devoted during a, a shorter time period as well. But in terms of Forex, there's no best time frame. I think what you need to do as a trader is determine how often you want, how much time you have to trade, right? Do you want to be intently focused at your charts for like a short, like an hour a day, in which case maybe scalping might be best for you. Um, or maybe you like um, to just look at the markets when they open, place your trades and, and go about your day. Maybe more like intraday trading would be for you. Um, or if you really don't have a lot of time during the week and you want to do more analysis on the weekends, then, um, you know, maybe position trading might be more your style. So for me, uh, the time frame is all dependent upon your trading style and your trading style is dependent upon your availability to trade and your trading personality as well. Um, Jeff asked, do you trade futures? Uh, no, I do not. I trade spot Forex. <clears throat> um, I see an, uh, a follow-up from the Belgium comment, but um, I would just say again, if you have tax questions to ask someone locally, um, again, it depends on the type of account you have and what country you live in and what the tax rules are and how it's taxed. So like some countries um, trading uh, short-term is short-term capital gains. Sometimes it gets lumped in with your personal income. It just depends. So it's really better suited to ask your an accountant or tax advisor. Um, do you use COT for trading and how? Okay, J.A. Grega, uh, you'll have to let me know what is, what is COT? <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. C-O-T. Hmm, I'm trying to think. I should probably know what that means. Or maybe I've just never used the acronym. <laughs> and if you have any other questions, I still have a little bit of time left. So feel free to, um, to post any questions you have, any burning questions. You're like, I've been dying to know this. Please tell me. Or, hey, can you show me your analysis on this pair or this pair? Commitment of traders. Uh, a report from the U.S. government. Nope, I honestly don't use that for anything. Uh, as a Forex trader, I'm not sure that it's even relevant. Um, I think that's maybe more for futures, if I were to guess or maybe for stock trading. I don't even know, but it's it's out of my wheelhouse. I'll say that um, for futures, yeah. Um, the next question is from Roseville, phone guy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so tell me, 
Tell me about when you knew trading would work and why. Ooh, I like this question. Um, so as I said earlier, for those of you maybe that hopped on late, uh, I've been trading for over 12 years and my first three years were not profitable <laughs> for lack of a better word. I tried and I tried and I tried and I was the little engine that couldn't. Um, and it wasn't for lack of trying, but it was just, I, I was trying to do too much instead of being a master of one. And the moment I knew that trading would work is when I started making money, <laughs> plain and simple. You know, um, I started having more positive trades and having positive weeks that turned into positive months that turned into positive years. Um, so really, you know, when we think about trading, a lot of people focus on certain stats that, you know, are, are interesting and helpful in optimization, but not indicative of profitability. So a lot of people say like, oh, I really need a, a five to one reward to risk ratio. You know, I really want to get that five X return or a certain, certain return on each trade, or I need to make so much money each day or blah, blah, blah. Um, you really can't do that with trading. Uh, well, you can't set daily expectations or else you're going to be chasing trades. Um, the other thing that can be a little bit dangerous is being so set in like a particular win rate or profit rate, because really the only thing that matters at the end of the day, like if you're going to focus on one metric in trading, it would be your profitability. Did you make money or did you lose money? Like that's going to tell you if you're doing well or not as a trader. Now, obviously in trading with almost every strategy out there, they can, there can be periods of downturn or drawdown with overall profitable strategies, right? Like losing weeks, losing months, even losing quarters or even losing years. Like look at the S&P 500 um, or any of the major indexes or um, any of the stocks that have been around for years. They can be really good stocks or really good markets and have a bad week, month, quarter, year, and still be profitable over time. So you that's the tricky thing with trading is kind of keeping that bigger picture perspective so that um so that you you know can stay sharp and and try to focus on making money, but also keep the perspective that you're you might not make money all the time. It's all about kind of risk mitigation and mitigating your losses, maximizing your gains, things like that. So um, the, the one way I knew that I was finally doing something right is I just started making money. Um, and I started making money by focusing on one strategy and perfecting it, really becoming a master of it. Um, I took kind of all my knowledge that I had gained and created a strategy of my own and I tweaked it and I was a student of it and I tracked my trades and I observed other potential outcomes and I refined how I managed my trades, where I entered, where I exited. And it was in that kind of deep work that I became profitable. So in my book, um, I kind of go through each of those four phases, which are, you know, crafting your trade plan, um, implementing your trade plan, because a lot of people think they have a strategy but then they don't actually implement it properly. You know, they don't follow the rules. They let their emotions get the best of them and kind of make irrational decisions. Um, you know, they can uh, revenge trade or anything like that. And so the key is to stick with it. That's stage two. And then from there, you need to optimize and uh, scale. So, so it's a process and you kind of have to take those baby steps, but it all starts for me. Um, and in the traders that I help in focusing on one strategy and really trying to become a master of it. The next question is, what is the one thing you discovered you did not consider when you started on this trading path, both positive and negative? Um, I would say the <laughs> it all kind of goes hand in hand, but just I thought, you know, I'm so smart. I can figure this out very quickly. <laughs> And, you know, in reality, it took me a few years to figure it out. And I, I had to temporarily give up. I had to look myself hard in the mirror and say, like, what am I doing wrong? I can't keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. Like, what do I need to change? How can I be a better trader? How can I be a student? Um, stay sharp and just 
improve and really own my trading instead of just trying to like um, do what other people say and then it not work for me and stuff like that. So I think it's just, it took me longer than I expected to figure it out and to become profitable. And um, at the same time, I would do it all over again. It was, it's been so worth it for how it's changed my life and given me the flexibility to live anywhere in the world with my family. Um, so that's the positive and negative, I would say. It's just to have the patience and to, to develop that patience and then to stick with it, even when uh, maybe you have like some major losses under your belt. <laughs> um, obviously, assuming you can still afford to trade. Okay. Um, can you give me a summary of your trading style? Sure. I'll just show you here real fast what I do in my analysis. I, um, I'm kind of always testing new things, but my main strategy I'll show you here. Um, so what I do is I start on the monthly and I use a couple of moving averages, but I'll just kind of use a basic example here with the nine moving average I have on my chart is determine, uh, the current month is still in progress. So I always look at the prior month. Um, was the trend down or up last month? And in this case, it was down. And then I go to my weekly chart and I look for confluence. So I want the weekly chart and the monthly chart to match before I even consider a trade because I want to get behind the momentum of bigger, of, you know, cumulative trading. Um, in this case, the Euro US dollar was up on the weekly and it has been for the last several weeks. So they would not be in alignment. Let me see if I can quickly um, find one that is in alignment so I can show you some of my other steps. I don't know. I trade 28 currency pairs, so I definitely do not memorize them. I have a, a um, spreadsheet I use to keep track of my trading weekly. Okay, that one's not in alignment either. Let me look up another one here. Actually, I think we... Okay, the weekly is up on this one. Let's see what the monthly is. Eh, last month was down. Okay, well, for, for sake of time here, um, I look for the monthly and the weekly chart to be in alignment using moving averages. And then um, on the monthly chart, sorry, I'm kind of going out of order here. My charts on my broker are set up a little differently. So on the monthly chart, if the monthly and the weekly are aligned from a trend standpoint in the same direction, giving me my trading bias of either buy or sell, then I'll go back to the monthly chart and I will notate key levels of support and resistance. So for example, um, these are all key levels where basically price change direction on the monthly chart, giving us support and resistance areas. So like right here is a good one that price is around right now. So I trade around these key levels of support and resistance. If the monthly and the weekly were in a downtrend, I would be looking for a sell setup um, around this. So from the monthly chart, I draw support and resistance. And then I go down to the daily chart and I look for price to close. So for example, if we were in a downtrend, I would want price to close on the daily chart below my monthly support and resistance line. And then from there, I go down to the four hour chart to time my entry more precisely with a pullback. So it's kind of complex. Again, I've been trading 12 years and, and refining and perfecting. So um, I use four time frames, which is not needed for successful trading, but that's um, my strategy in a nutshell that I use personally. Okay, between brokers who bill clients in activity fee and those who don't, who do advise beginner traders to patronize? Ooh, I'm not going to be the right person to answer this. I think that's a personal question. There's a lot of things to consider. Um, if you don't plan to trade, just consider using a demo account um, instead of a live account. Um, or if you know you're not going to be trading frequently, you definitely should just make sure you're considering the inactivity window and the fees associated with it if you want to open a live account um, or just withdraw your money if you're not going to be trading. Those are my thoughts on it. And then what about my exit strategy? So um, I have a I, I teach a couple of different exit strategies. Um, 
I personally use a one-to-one -one with a trailing stop loss. Uh, I don't know if you know what that is, but there's a certain way that I calculate my stop loss and I like to get in and out quickly of trades, even though this is position trading and my trades last, you know, days to weeks. Um, I like to just kind of lock in profits and have more of a steady, consistent gain versus kind of all the ups and downs of looking for larger profits. And the one-to-one -one with a trailing stop loss works really well for me. Okay. Uh, no, you didn't miss any links. We've just been doing a QA. and a um, and it was an ask me anything about trading. We had lots of good questions throughout the call. And I know we're kind of getting ready to wrap up here before the next presentation. So thank you so much to everyone who um, asked questions. I do have a special offer in case any of you are interested in some private coaching. Um, basically, I work with traders in, you know, one on one coaching to streamline or build your strategy, one that works for you one that um, is ideal for you based on your lifestyle when you're available to trade. Uh, a lot of traders have kind of areas they're already trading and they just want to enhance it. Or if you're brand new, I can also help you build a strategy. And then from there, we optimize your entries and exits during our time together. We fine tune your risk mitigation and position sizing. And then there's some custom trading resources I create for you in our time together as well, like a trade journal, um, a watch list, uh, a trade plan document, et cetera. So this is something I offer in my four-week trading accelerator, which is normally four weeks of private coaching. So a weekly coaching call every week at $1,500. Uh, my special offer for those of you on this call, which is really amazing or watching the recording, is that I'm going to throw in two extra weeks of coaching at the same price. So you're going to get two bonus coaching calls making what is normally a four-week program a six-week program. And that's, again, one-on-one -on -one private coaching. So really unheard of pricing for private coaching. It's all uh, via Zoom and scheduled at a time that works well for you. But if you want to take advantage of this, uh, two bonus calls, so six weeks of private coaching at my normal price, you can get it here at tradefocus.com forward slash accelerate. The only thing you need to do to get those two extra calls is purchase by Sunday, December 3rd. So if you purchase between now and then, you will automatically get the two extra weeks. So six weeks in total of private coaching, um, again, at $1,500. That's it for me. I just want to say thank you to everyone on the call. Thank you for your participation. I hope all your burning questions got answered. Um, I'd love to connect with you guys after this call. If you're interested in checking out my website or book, I've listed that here. I also have my Facebook page, um, my email. So feel free to email me directly, support at tradefocus.com. And again, the special offer is available at tradefocus.com forward slash accelerate. So thank you all so very much. Um, I appreciate, again, all the dialogue and the wide range of topics, but I just love helping traders. Um, you know, my journey had a lot of ups and downs. Uh, especially in those first few years. And I learned a lot of things the hard way. And so now I really enjoy helping traders shorten their learning curve and kind of get turned into profitable traders more quickly than I was able to do. <laughs> so uh, thank you all. I hope you have a great week and enjoy the rest of the presentations. And David, I will turn it back over to you.